Now I'm going to move on to the next big topic, which is how do you design a multiprocessor system? And what is the hardware support I need to provide to make sure that programs run correctly on these multiprocessors? So let me start straight away with an example. I think this gives you the best view of what a multiprocessor system is going to look like and what are the potential problems that could be caused. So what I'm showing you over here is what is referred to as a symmetric multiprocessor. So you have a processor, you have some L1 or L2 caches that have been provided for that processor. So these could be viewed as that processor's private caches. Similarly, you have, you know, just like you have processor P1 here, you have processors P2, P3, P4, each with its set of private caches. And when you have a miss in the cache, you now have to access your external memory system. And what has been provided over here is a shared physical main memory system. And this main memory system is accessible through this shared bus over here. And all of these processes are connected to that bus, right? So this could be one chip, this next one could be a different chip, and so on. You could also have each one of these processes sitting in one gigantic chip over here, which could be my multi-core processor. But which design style we are looking at is not super relevant. What is common to all of these designs is that you have individual processors or cores. They all have private caches. And once you miss in the private cache, you are going to go through a shared interconnect, a shared bus to access a shared physical main memory system. Now let's go through an example of how data get, might get placed in these caches and how different threads have to coordinate with each other. So we're going to assume that we are running one large multi-threaded application on this multiprocessor system, right? So P1 is going to run thread T1, P2 is going to run thread T2, and you know P3 similarly is going to run T3 and P4, okay? So there are all these different threads running. Since these threads belong to a larger multi-threaded application, they may end up touching the same data structures, right? So there could be a physical location X sitting over here that all of these threads end up accessing. So maybe thread T1 issues a load for that data, right? So it says load something from X and bring it into register $1. So when you make that request, you first look up your caches. Since this is the first access to data element X, it's going to be a cache miss. Okay, so when you don't find it in the cache, you're going to put a request on this bus saying, I want to read the value in X. Now, what we are designing over here is a cache coherence protocol that makes sure that all of these different processors and all of these different caches agree on what is the value of a given data element. So I'm going to design a cache coherence protocol that ensures that once the value is produced, it gets propagated correctly to all the other caches. And what I'm designing over here is a bus-based or a snooping-based cache coherence protocol where each one of these caches is responsible for listening to the bus, snooping on what everybody else is doing, and then responsible for self-managing their own caches. Okay, so when a request for read X shows up on the bus, all of these other caches are going to listen to the bus, realize that somebody else is accessing X, they're all going to look up their caches, they're going to realize that they don't have a copy of X, so this request does not involve them in any way. Once the main memory figures out that no one else is involved, it says, well, I'll provide the latest copy of X since I have it. So the main memory gets the value of X, places it on the bus, and processor P1 is going to pick that value off the bus, place it into its cache, and this is now kept in what is referred to as shared state. Shared state indicates that I'm only interested in reading this block. Okay, so now that you have the value of X, processor P1 continues and you know thread T1 gets its value, it continues to execute. Sometime later, processor P4 may also issue a similar request saying, I want to get the value in X, put it into some register, let's say $2. And so it looks up its caches, does not have a copy of X, and places a read X request on the bus. Again, all the other caches are snooping. P2 and P3 realize that they don't have a copy of X, so they just ignore this request. Processor P1 does realize that it has a copy of X and that X is in shared state. This means that there's a valid copy of X sitting in processor P1 and processor P1 can actually respond to this request with the correct value of X. 
In this case, since the block is in shared state, the processor knows that main memory also has a valid copy of X. And so to keep the protocol simple, it just says that I'll let main memory deal with this request. Okay, so main memory, after some time, gets the value of X, puts it on the bus, processor P4 reads the value of X from the bus and puts it into the cache and places it again in shared state, meaning that I'm only interested in reading this block and it's perfectly safe for multiple caches to have a copy of X all in shared state, right? Because it's perfectly safe for many people to read the value of X and all of these different values are going to be the same. Okay, so there's really no problem in replicating a block in multiple caches as long as each cache state is shared. Now, sometime later, processor P1 comes along and says that I produce a result in $3 and I want to write that result back into the location X. So I'm now interested in writing into X. So I first look up my cache, I find a copy of X, but X is in shared state. The shared state only gives me permissions to read from this block. It does not give me permissions to change the value of X, right? Because there could be other shared copies. And so having it in shared state really does not give me permissions to perform a write. Okay, so this is a hit in terms of finding the data, but it's a miss in terms of not having the right set of permissions to modify this block. Okay, so what the cache does is it places a request on the bus and this request is an upgrade request saying that I don't really need the data, I have the data, but I'd like permissions to write into this block. Since all the other caches are snooping on the bus, they all realize that processor P1 is trying to upgrade and write into X. So P2 and P3 look up their caches, they don't have a copy of X, so they say, you know, we just don't care about this transaction. But P4 looks up its cache, realizes that it has a copy of X, which is just about to go stale, right? It's about to get out of date because P1 is going to write to X. So it says that, you know, what is appropriate now is for me to downgrade my state and go from shared to invalid because this cache copy is very soon about to become invalid. Okay, so that is the whole reason that I sent out this upgrade request. It's basically to let everybody else know that a change is about to happen in P1, so everybody else needs to invalidate their cached copy. So once that has happened, this copy of X is the only cached copy. So now it's perfectly safe for P1 to go ahead and start modifying the contents of this block. So essentially having sent the upgrade request on the bus, I can now upgrade my state from shared to modified, which gives me both read and write permissions. So now processor P1 can go ahead and change the value of X. If it later were to again read something from X or if it were to write something into X, these are all going to be cache hits because you do have a copy of X, it's in modified state, that gives you both read and write permissions, right? So both of these requests will be cache hits.